Good evening again, everyone. We'll just give it one more minute. We'll start at roughly 6.02 and uh, start going through the presentation for tonight. Lindsay, real quick, it, I'd only be able to join from one device for that panelist, right? Mm, you should be able to join from two. Okay, I'll keep trying, but it's not a big deal. Okay, all right, we'll go ahead and get started with the presentation. There may be a few others that join us uh, as we go through our public meeting this evening. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, just a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, there is a Q&A within the Zoom window, so feel free to chat questions or comments as we go through the presentation. We will have um, some interactive polls uh, throughout the next hour and we'll take questions and answers at uh, the end of the presentation. So with that, so we're gonna do a brief introduction. We'll once again, uh, cover the study area, uh, summary of the public, the outreach from the first phase we did a couple months ago, um, back in January, only really two months ago. I'm gonna describe the priority projects as well as the general recommendations that we came up with throughout the study area and then we'll open it up to questions and answers. So just an introduction, this uh, study has been funded uh, by the city of Waterville as well as the city of Troy. Um, it was through a grant from the Department of State. Um, I am Lindsay Zefting, a uh, principal with Alta Planning and Design uh, leading the project, but we've also had a lot of support with our partners, Chase and Companies, Floyd Albert Associates, as well as EDR. So again, I'm Lindsay, uh, Principal, Engineer, and Planner with Alta Planning and Design. And uh, Joe, you want to give a quick introduction? Sure. Uh, my name is Joe Lasavita. I'm with the uh, City of Waterville Lead as their General Manager. Uh, before I introduce the uh, Waterville Lead side, I just wanted to take a moment. Um, first, Lindsay, to thank you uh, for keeping us all on task and getting us here tonight. Uh, it's been a, a pleasure working with Alta and the team that you put together. Um, I have to say, you got us all thinking outside the box. You got us thinking within, and uh, you really provided us with the format to get us to have some transformational projects in both municipalities. Um, I got a deep respect on how you mentored us through the process. And one of the things that got, you know, grabbed me was people would ask a question and you, you somehow pulled it back into the designs. You didn't miss one. And uh, you kept us all going uh, with alternatives, designs, and uh, what we were all striving for. So uh, I can't thank you enough for a project that I think is going to be very transformational in this region, both for the city of Troy and for the city of Waterville, uh, but also to my counterparts across the river. Um, we've had some spirited conversations. It wasn't a one-sided thinking. Uh, we both wanted the right things to win for both sides. I've never had a project or been involved with a project like this before, where it was a very, uh, we worked together as a team, very cohesive. Uh, and I'm very excited for what the future leads for both our municipalities. Uh, but even from the, the public sector, when we were getting uh, questions uh, from them, um, again, same thing. It, it was a community type of design, a community type of conversation. And I'm very excited for, for what we have coming out in the future. Um, when the city first started looking at this, uh, this application, um, we kind of looked at it when we came in with the new administration under Mayor Patricelli. We looked at it a little differently as to the original thought process, but we were looking more for safety, friendly, uh, pedestrian, uh, and bicycle, bicycle uh, type of amenities uh, with an end result to go to the Hudson Shores Park. And uh, like I said, with all the conversations we've had, we've seen some street designs, some sidewalk designs, some, some things that I think will really transform the city of Waterville and put us on a path for what we see on our partners across the bridge uh, for multiple years of development 
And that's what we're hopeful for here in the city of Water Belief. So again, Lindsay, I can't thank you enough for all the hard work and you guys over in Troy, fantastic work uh, working with you. Thank you, Joe. I've worked on some pretty exciting projects, but this one uh, certainly is at the top of the list. I've really enjoyed working with this one and with, uh, with both municipalities. James, you wanna do a quick introduction from City of Troy? Yeah, as it says on the page, I'm James Rath. I'm the planner of the City of Troy. I've been the project manager on this side. Um, yeah, as, as Joe said, it's been wonderful and hopefully people uh, like it as well. I'm looking forward to some good discussions and public feedback. Oh, great, I'm muted, sorry. <laughs> All right, with that, um, just to remind everyone, our study area, the, the focus of the study area is the Conger Street Bridge, but we looked at both municipalities on both sides, extending north to cover the entire Hudson Shores Park and 23rd, um, all the way west to Fifth Avenue within the city of Water Valite, and looking north to State Street Garage uh, within the city of Troy and all the way over to Second Avenue, Third Avenue, sorry, um, in the city of Troy. Um, with that, we're gonna launch our first poll just to get an idea of who's here this evening. Um, whether those are from city of Troy, city of Watervliet or outside the municipalities. We'll give it just another minute. All right, we have most people responding. Do you wanna go ahead and show the uh, polling results? Okay, so a lot of residents from the city of Troy, uh, Water Vliet, and some from outside the municipalities. That's great. All right, so just a little bit of background of what we've done between our uh, last public meeting and now we've had additional stakeholder meetings. We had really great involvement from additional city of Waterville staff and elected officials there, um, additional city of Troy staff, uh, the Capital District Transportation Authority, New York State DOT, CDTC, um, Troy Housing Authority, the Waterville Housing Authority, and uh, various different interest groups between um, the city of Waterville and the city of Troy. So we really think that uh, those participants, um, their involvement through this process was really critical getting us to where we are today and as quickly as we got to where we are today. So just real quick, the results of our online survey, we had 393 survey response, which is fantastic. Um, so you can just see a breakdown of where those respondents live, either within or outside the study area and between both municipalities. Um, as far as just the question of, would you walk or bike more if we made improvements? And overwhelmingly, the response was yes. Uh, amenities that people were interested in, trails, picnicking, pavilions, kind of runs down the list. Um, most people do use a vehicle through the study area, but a lot of people also walk and bike and take public transportation. The reasons for not walking and biking were hazardous conditions or lack of facilities, um, you know, the feeling of dangerous intersections. So what improvements would like to see the most? And we broke this up based on where people were from. Um, the Riverfront Trails scored pretty high, uh, as well as bike facilities across the Congress Street Bridge. Um, also just connectivity to the waterfront. And then we also asked in that first survey, which projects are most important to you? A shared use path across the bridge uh, scored really high for everyone. Um, a southern connection to Hudson Shores Park scored really high for those in Water Valley, but also overall. Um, and then within Troy, a riverfront trail along Front Street um, also scored really high. So I'm going to run through the priority projects. Uh, we had discussed this a little bit at the last public meeting, but now we've really got the ideas for them and the renderings and the graphics to go along with them um, to present tonight. So we'll present the Charities Path across the Congress Street Bridge, the River Street intersection, improvements to 19th and 2nd Ave, Front Street and Southern Connection to Hudson Shores Park, as well as some improvements to 23rd. 
this is just a graphic and you can see it behind me through the entire presentation of how these all these priority projects can really come together. So you see the shared use path across the bridge that connects down into the new intersection and the shared use path across the river, um, the improved connection through Hudson Shores Park, the connection into Water Valley, and even the connection up to 23rd. So this is just to show how, while we highlight these as six individual projects, um, they really come together to be a catalyst for improvement to this entire area um, and really are connected to one another. So with that, the first project, the Congress Street Bridge Shared Use Path. Um, so the goal of this project was to provide a comfortable and inviting pedestrian and bicycle path across the bridge to also reduce vehicular speeds with the lane capacity that's out there, the width. Um, there's a lot of speeding that occurs across the bridge and also to provide a gateway and a connection between these two communities. Um, we proposed either a potentially a phased approach, which would be roughly a million dollars or a, a full build out of two, two and a half million dollars. Um, it would involve the city of Troy, the city of Watervliet and New York State DOT collaborating together. So the proposal is to keep the northern half of the bridge exactly how it is today. The existing concrete barrier that's in the middle bridge would remain exactly where it is, but the northern half of the bridge would be converted into two single lanes for east and westbound traffic. The entire southern half of the bridge <clears throat> would be converted into a shared use path. Um, since we have that entire pavement space, we're able to create a 14 foot wide trail and still keep two foot shoulders or clear zones on either side of the path the entire way for easier maintenance. Um, and also incorporate a landscaping element. Just having the shared use path on the bridge um, is great to have that space, but that added element for it to be inviting, especially when you're so high above the Hudson River of having that little bit of protection and um, inviting atmosphere with having some landscaping on the bridge. We also incorporated um, some jogs in the shared use path so that it comes closer to the river and away from the river to provide opportunities for owner overlooks like at the apex of the bridge. So this is a rendering of what the uh, shared use path may look like. Um, you know, phase one approach would be putting in the shared use path and the overlooks as well as the trees on the bridge. A phase two, could be coming back and adding more pedestrian scale lighting as well as replacing the bridge railing to be something that's more pedestrian friendly. Um, not necessarily from a protection standpoint, the railing that's out there is, is perfectly safe, but for better views of the Hudson River. Um, so with that, we're gonna launch our next poll. I just wanted to get everyone's feedback as far as what you think of this first priority project. Are you in favor of it? Would you like to see some changes? Um, or are you neutral about it? We'll launch that next, there you go, thank you. So we'll give it a minute. And if you have, if you're responding that you're in favor, but you'd like to see certain changes, uh, feel free to submit those through the chat or we'll provide um, an, an email address for the projects so that you can submit those after the fact if you'd like. And there is a question already, would the north and south traffic work in a single lane? Yes. The amount of traffic that is on the bridge currently will function within two vehicle, uh, with two travel lanes. Um, wanna go ahead and close the poll. A lot of people strongly in favor, a few with some changes. So again, feel free to send those in either the chat, the Q and A, um, or uh, through the email address we'll provide at the end of the presentation. So we'll go ahead and close that poll. So, our next project is the River Street intersection. Uh, so the goal of this project is to provide a direct connection to the bridge and between South Troy and downtown to allow more direct access to enhance bicycle and pedestrian connectivity and really overall better circulation within downtown and around the Taylor Street apartments as they redevelop. So the recommendation here <clears throat> is to create a four-way intersection. This would be coupled with the conversion of Ferry Street to two-way. Um, 
This would also incorporate two C new CDTA bus stops at this intersection, um, located both on the west approaches of the intersection. We included curb bump outs to really define the on-street parking that would be provided. And you see how the shared use path comes down. This additional space that's kind of remaining from the additional from the current structure creates a bit of a pocket park. Um, so, and there would be a direct connection down to the riverfront stairs. The grades don't allow for a direct ramp, but the shared use path would continue to the south and to the north along River Street, as well as along Ferry Street with a connection to the alley to really get into downtown. Um, so really providing that multimodal uh, connectivity within the intersection. And you can see a, a rendering of what this would look like from the corner of the intersection, looking back at the bridge um, with those two lanes. We did look at traffic volumes and level of service. Um, so all of this operates uh, sufficiently for vehicles and buses while still providing a, a tight intersection for pedestrians and cyclists. So we'll go ahead and launch our next poll asking the same question as far as what you all think about this priority project. Are you in favor uh, in favor with some changes or just neutral um, to the project or not in favor? Always an option. We'll give that a minute. And you can go ahead and close the poll when we see most people have responded. A lot of people strongly in favor. Again, if you've got some, some proposed changes, feel free to send those in. Go ahead and close the poll. <clears throat> there is a question, um, will all Northern traffic exit Sage and use the Sunnel? Um, so with the intersection and uh, it, you would allow all movements to happen when you come off the bridge or to avoid going onto the bridge, which I know a lot of people often get redirected out of Troy over the bridge um, so that this intersection will help resolve some of that. Um, so our next priority project is uh, 19th Street and 2nd Ave intersection. Um, this would provide a safer pedestrian. The goal of the project is to provide safer pedestrian accommodations to feel more comfortable navigating the intersection and provide some traffic calming. So the recommendation here is to um, really try and narrow up the intersection. Unfortunately, with the amount of heavy vehicles that travel through the intersection, um, we can't really tighten the, the curb radii completely um, and we can't really eliminate any of the existing turn lanes. However, we did provide some recommendations to really uh, tighten up the intersection um, and make it feel more comfortable for pedestrians and cyclists. The longest approach of the intersection is the westbound approach coming off the bridge with the amount of turn lanes that are there. So we were able with the reduction of the one lane heading east to incorporate a pedestrian re refuge island to really break up that crosswalk so that, again, pedestrians have that refuge in the middle of the longest crosswalk. We also incorporated um, mountable truck aprons, which will allow trucks that need a larger turning radius to turn um, through the intersection, but for the average vehicle, which is a majority of the traffic in the intersection, um, they will, be encouraged to slow down, it'll be uncomfortable for your passenger vehicles to turn over those curbs. So really, again, just tightening up the radius, we still have the bike lanes that are existing today. And again, the pedestrian refuge island. And you see this will become uh, the eastbound approach would be a left turn only, and then a through right onto the single lane over the bridge, and then that merging onto the north side of the bridge. So, with that, we'll go ahead and open the poll as far as feedback on this project, and I'll read the couple of questions that have come in. All right, not specific to this intersection, so we'll follow up those later. 
Oh, there is, is there a plan for bottlers or other protection on the inside of the truck aprons? So it would be the existing curb and then the truck aprons would be mountable. Um, we'll be providing an image in the report and um, so you can take a look at that, but uh, the mountable curb will be really the, pro the protection. Um, so a lot of people in favor of uh, this proposal and a few in favor with some changes. So again, feel free to send those in in the Q&A or again, the email we'll provide at the end of the presentation. Some positive just on the, Go ahead, sorry, James. Just on the, on the bollard question. Um, yeah, that's a great point. You know, it would, it would add a, a vertical element there that cars wouldn't want to go over. But that, that truck apron, and you, you will be able to see those photos in the report, um, that it will be an uncomfortable maneuver for a, an average vehicle to take. But we need to leave those areas clear right now for the larger vehicles, the, the, the larger trucks to make that turning movement. Um, and then it's, not, it's also not an area for congregating or waiting. It's, it's really just to give pedestrians that, um, that head start to get across the street and narrow that distance a little bit, but it's, it's not meant to be, you know, a space where somebody would stand and, and, and spend a lot of time. Yeah, I, thanks James for, for following up with that. And it, um, probably the most significant uh, result of implementing the truck aprons will be the passenger vehicles making those turns at much slower speeds. Um, providing a, a safer crossing condition. Uh, a really close correlation to what these would look like is um, the mountable islands you typically see on roundabouts. Um, same type of treatment, just at a corner instead of the, the middle islands. So our next priority project is the Front Street Trail Conversion. Um, so the goal of this project is to allow for future development of the waterfront park and uh, provide flexible space for events and activities um, and you know, continue the waterfront trail. So we took a, a next step beyond what had been previously proposed by the developer of having this continuous waterfront trail, it would close Front Street between Congress Street and Division, providing really a dual path. So what we're recommending is a uh, pedestrian path directly along the waterfront for people to congregate, fish, enjoy the river, um, but a parallel and separate shared use path for cyclists and pedestrians that are moving through the site. Um, underneath the bridge, there's already the existing basketball court we're recommending that that actually be dropped at the, to the same level as the uh, pedestrian path along the waterfront and bench seating being created behind it up to the bridge railing, really creating this nice community space underneath the bridge. And you can see just a rendering of what that would look like um, as you kind of have this wider open space underneath the bridge area as a congregation and bench space. So with that, we'll open our next poll. So converting Front Street into a riverfront trail and uh, the proposed recommendations along with that. How does everyone feel? Strongly in favor, in favor with some changes, neutral or not in favor? So we'll give that just another minute for everyone to respond. Thank you all for participating in our polls this evening. Another one in which most of our participants this evening are strongly in favor. Appreciate that. All right, we will next move on to our next priority project. So our Southern connection to the Hudson Shores Park. Um, we looked at a number of different alternatives, a direct connection uh, down from the Congress Street Bridge, an elevator. We landed on the preferred option being a tunnel under 787 for a number of reasons, uh, maintenance, uh, construction cost, implementation, 
um, really the tunnel under 77 is uh, the best option to make that Southern connection um, and really have a direct link to the city, Southern portion of the city of Waterbury and really the civic center. So with that, we would have, we had proposed in the report a couple of different options of what this tunnel would look like, how big it would be, and also methods for construction. The cheapest alternative is to do an open cut of 787 and put in a box culvert, say 12 by 10 or 12 by 12. Um, that would require significant coordination with DOT, but similar projects have been done within the Northeast. Included in that would be uh, really completing the trail that already exists in Hudson Shores Park all the way to the south, connecting to the tunnel and creating this really nice overlook as a southern entrance to Hudson Shores Park. On the uh, west side of the tunnel, this would provide a direct connection up 16th Street. Uh, with the number of driveways that's there, the existing pavement width, we've recommended protected bike facilities along with the existing sidewalks to really create a smooth connection uh, to and from the Mall Hudson Bike Hike Trail and this new tunnel and southern access to Hudson Shores Park. And this is a, a rendering of what it would look like if you were traveling down 16th Street towards the tunnel. Again, having this, uh, this southern access uh, to Hudson Shores Park um, could really open up a lot of opportunities for water beliefs. So with that, we'll launch, I think our second to last poll and priority projects. Give that just one more minute. We obviously have a, a handful of questions about uh, specific traffic motions or, or movements. So we'll have to go back through some of those at the end while you know we're past those images so it'll be easier to start yeah. knows that we're we're not ignoring you we'll, we'll get to them yes we will get to all your questions um and uh, i can go back in the presentation and we can better explain that traffic circulation once we've gone through the general recommendations i think a couple of them may be answered by some of the other things we'll get into um so uh, the connection, Southern Connection to Hudson Shores Park, 54 strongly in favor, more that are neutral, um, a few in favor with some changes. So again, uh, feel free to send that in Q&A or email. Our last priority project is the 23rd Street improvements. So the goal of this project is to reduce the amount of pavement space that's out there um, which induces vehicle speed and causes a lot of confusion between multiple modes of transportation, clarify the turning movement, shorten the crossing walks, uh, crosswalks, and really enhance comfort for bicycles and pedestrians within the corridor, um, as well as enhance the entrance to Hudson Shores Park. So the recommendation that we came up with is really eliminating a lot of the pavement space, reducing the through lanes and the turning lanes to the minimum width that's allowed by New York State DOT um, and turning that really into green space, completing the sidewalk along the north side and still completing that the existing shared use path and connecting it further down 23rd. Um, one of the recommendations we had was looking at Whitehall Street and how do we enhance the pedestrian crossing that's there. We know that there's a lot of crossings that that happen at that intersection. It's mid block between two existing uh, signalized intersections um, and a lot of turning movements that happen there. So one option is to go extreme and close the in intersection to be right in, right out only. However, that has a lot of impacts to traffic circulation in the area, even though it provides a safe pedestrian crossing. So we're gonna be looking at before we finalize the study a couple of other options on how we can enhance pedestrian connectivity with um, similar recommendations while still providing 
uh, better traffic circulation or the existing movements that can happen there today. So we're gonna be including a few alternatives in the final report. Um, but you can see this recommendation really tightens up uh, the entire corridor, introduces a lot more opportunity for landscaping, just realigning this southbound exit ramp off 77 will help slow vehicles down um, and really, again, defining those turning movements so that even the drivers that are out there know what to expect when a vehicle is in the left turn lane, that they're in the left turn lane, et cetera. Um, and some of these median islands uh, will help, help that as well. Um, we did look at a couple of alternatives, trying to introduce more median islands. It's not, while it would further induce more traffic calming, it does create some um, more maintenance concerns. So we did rule that out as a preferred. We did look at a dog bone roundabout as an option. Um, this would be a, a future option. It's more expensive, requires much more coordination with DOT and FHWA to realign the exit um, and on-ramps. Um, but we did wanna make sure that we included that option. It would be a really nice gateway feature uh, in this corridor. The other thing we did include was a recommendation for really enhancing the Northern connection to Hudson Shores Park defining the park entrance, narrowing it down so it's safer for pedestrians and cyclists that may be crossing the driveway, um, as well as vehicles that are entering and exiting, creating some more definition to that park entrance, as well as some more amenities, an overlook over the Hudson River, a really nice picnic area, and some better defined parking, and shared use path through uh, the site along the Hudson River. So with that, we'll do our last poll on priority projects and I'll get into some of the general recommendations. And again, we will go back to um, some of the questions that we have. So we'll give this another minute. And I realize, yes, some of the diagrams may be uh, a little small. This will be the recording of tonight's presentation. will be posted online in the next day or two. And we can also post the presentation from tonight so that you guys uh, can take some more time to look through it and zoom in on some of the graphics and renderings that we put together. And with that, a little over 50% in favor, uh, a few with changes, neutral, some not in favor. Okay, thank you everyone. All right, so we really did focus a lot of the project on of our efforts in this study on these priority projects that will be a catalyst, but we also wanted to make general recommendations for the entire study area, um, other projects that can make bigger improvements for bicycle, pedestrian, as well as vehicular connectivity. Um, so one of the general recommendations is the loop trail that will um, really be created by all of these projects coming together. So all of the priority projects play a role in creating this southern half of the loop trail. It'd be a 2.5 mile trail between Water Valite, Green Island, and the city of Troy. Um, there are three additional gaps that would need to be completed beyond the priority projects to finish this loop. Um, continuing the riverfront promenade for this section within the city of Troy, um, really building out a bicycle connection across the Green Island Bridge. We proposed uh, taking the northernmost westbound lane. Again, the bridge is over capacity, um, so we can take a, a travel lane away to provide a dedicated bicycle facility on the bridge, and then proposed bike lanes along the lower Hudson Avenue. And I hear rumblings that 20 or so years ago, there actually were already bike lanes on Hudson Avenue, so it would just be putting those back. Um, so that is our general recommendation to complete these priority projects and create this overall loop trail, which would be beneficial to all three communities. Then we have our general recommendations for the city of Waterfleet, and I'll go through these pretty quickly one by one, um, and then ask you uh, which you feel is the most important to implement. 
The first of which is creating this connection along the bridge between 2nd Ave and Broadway. There's already an existing sidewalk here, actually on both sides of the bridge. Um, but with this connection down to Broadway, the new shared use path, really making that an inviting connection. So widening it out to accommodate both bicycles and pedestrians, uh, incorporating some lighting, some additional landscaping, potentially some benches and some artwork. You now have this entire wall along the bridge, perfect place for a mural. Um, the next recommendation that we have within the city of Waterbury is the improvements to Second Ave and some urban roundabouts to go with it. As part of the DRI, it was recommended that a boulevard treatment be implemented on 2nd Ave. Implementing roundabouts on either end um, really make that whole concept come to life so that the driveways for Stewart's and the other developments along there um, can be right in, right out without severely impacting traffic. Um, these roundabouts essentially provide a turnaround and gateways to this whole, this whole area. The um, cross section that's recommended for 2nd Ave, again, would provide two travel lanes, a landscape center median, which still allow for left turn pockets, and a two-way cycle track for a protected bicycle facility, um, and then the existing sidewalks. Our next recommendation within the city of Waterville is improvements to 21st Street. So this is a, a, another direct connection between downtown and the business district within Waterville and Broadway and the shared use path. So really highlighting 21st Street as a bicycle and pedestrian route. Um, the recommendation here, since it's already low traffic volume is what we call a bike boulevard. It's a shared street with traffic calming. So encouraging vehicles to travel at the same or similar speeds to what a cyclist would. So again, traffic calming, curb extensions located on, you know, essentially in the middle of the corridor as well as shared lane markings. Our next recommendation is really the same treatment of Bike Boulevard on 23rd Street. This was also recommended in Waterville's bike plan that was done several years ago. Um, so again, including those shared lane markings and some traffic coming treatments, curb extensions and um, a raised crosswalk. So the improvements along Fifth Avenue, it really in this, uh, you know, this core, this connection to the price shopper development and the local residents, this is a wider section of Fifth Ave, which would allow for bike lanes um, as well as crosswalks. We also include in this recommendation, relocating the signal from Sixth Ave to Fifth Ave, um, since Fifth Ave really would become the primary bicycle and pedestrian connectivity does see more vehicular activity at that intersection. It's a, a better location for a signal um, and doesn't need to be duplicated with a signal at six. We also recommended uh, installing amenities around the city of Waterville, specifically within the business district in Hudson Shores Park and at the Civic Center, so the library, city hall. Um, these amenities make it more comfortable for people to walk and bike. Just having bike racks, fix it, station, fix it stations, benches, wayfinding, signage, um, just really make it a more comfortable environment um, and pretty easy to add. We also recommended another bike boulevard on 16th and 5th Avenue. So 16th that makes the connection up from 2nd Avenue and the proposed tunnel and then connecting down Fifth Avenue into the business district. This route would have less traffic, lower speeds than if you were on 19th and more comfortable for the more interested and concerned cyclist. And here are just a couple of examples of the types of treatments you see on a bike boulevard, um, a neighborhood traffic circle, uh, really just a small circle that creates a bit of horizontal deflection in the roadway, curb extension, shared lane markings. And you can see a proposed cross section of the uh, recommendations for 16th and 5th. So with that, one more, well, second to last poll, just wanted to get everyone's feel for what do you feel of the general recommendations we have within the city of Waterville would be uh, most important to you to see implemented. We'll give that just a minute.
And when we have most people responding, we can go ahead and close the poll. Congress Street Bridge to Broadway connection, our first recommendation. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate your feedback. Joe, now you know. <clears throat> All right, so moving across the river into the city of Troy, we'll go through our general recommendations within, uh, more or less within our study area for the city of Troy. Uh, the first recommendation um, also comes from the, the Troy bike plan uh, that was done a few years ago, uh, implementing protected bike lanes on 3rd and 4th Street. So the existing curb to curb width wouldn't need to change. Um, it would be narrowing up the travel lane and the existing parking to provide a protected bicycle facility um, with a three inch raised curve or flexible delineators. There are various options there. Um, the image shown in the top right hand corner is an example of that what that raised curb might look like. Um, but this really provides a, a protective facility, again, more comfortable for the interested and concerned um, cyclists. And uh, this would be paired, so be one door, uh, heading southbound on third, northbound on fourth. Also within the city of Troy, we uh, recommended the Ferry Street and Congress Street improvements. So this is really uh, looking at both roadways. So Ferry Street and Congress Street currently are one-way pairs. The recommendation is to convert Ferry Street to two-way vehicular traffic, um, and that really being the primary vehicular route and transit route through the city of Troy which allows Congress Street to be converted into more of a shared street, having uh, improved bicycle and pedestrian connectivity. So you can see this would be the, the new cross section for Ferry Street. So allowing two-way traffic and single lanes, still maintaining the existing eight-foot parking lane. And then on Congress Street, the existing sidewalk and then a two-way cycle track, essentially the existing extra travel lane would be converted into a cycle track. We proposed a slightly raised cycle track with um, that would be separated by really mountable curbs, creates more of a shared street and introduces more textures to um, further slow traffic, but it provides a separate facility for bicycles and especially ones that are uh, traveling counter to vehicular traffic, which can cause some confusion and conflict. So uh, this is an example of a, a similar shared street. So trying to bring in those elements from what we, you know, a shared street or Woonerf is another term for it. So trying to introduce um, slower speeds in a shared environment. The next project within the city of Troy is converting uh, River Street to two way. Um, what we highlight in this graphic here is uh, what would need to occur in order to have the existing, to have the required width to have way two way vehicular traffic. On about half of the corridor, um, there's already existing width, even with the on current on street parking. There would either be some loss of a few parking spaces or pushing the curb back in a few locations, but there's also some excess parking that already exists on Congress Street really with the, uh, the creation of Ferry Street being two-way, River Street being two-way, it really creates this two-way vehicular traffic border around downtown Troy, reducing confusion, increasing circulation um, for cyclists, is, but primarily vehicles um, and increasing some economic development opportunities within the city of Troy. Um, we also recommended uh, the Franklin Alley project has been so successful continuing that project through downtown. Uh, so extending Franklin Alley uh, down past Broadway through State Street all the way to Congress, so be two additional blocks. And then also uh, providing the same treatment on Church Street Alley um, for two blocks. So that would be from Ferry Street up to Congress and up to state so that they overlap for that one block between State Street and Congress. And again, some just representative images here. James? Yeah, I just wanted to, before we go too far ahead, uh, point out on the, the River Street two-way, 
um, what, what we're really envisioning here is is similar to the slow streets um, that we were talking about over in Waterville, and and not that there's going to be this crazy busy you know competitive corridor with with fourth or ferry uh, or, or third even for that matter um, so yeah i just wanted to reiterate that this the idea is to provide flow and access in both directions but not um, to create this uh, high speed environment it's still going to be extremely pedestrian scale pedestrian friendly um, and that's really important. We recognize the importance of that on the, the River Street corridor there. Appreciate that, James. Yes, absolutely. And we have run some preliminary modeling um, within downtown Troy, and I think that effort's going to be ongoing, but it has shown that with these conversions of streets to two-way, that there would not be a significant increase in traffic. And with some traffic calming, um, it really just provides better connectivity, not generating more vehicles or higher speeds. So the uh, one of the last general recommendations within the city of Troy is really uh, enhancing the pedestrian um, environment along the Ferry Street corridor. We looked at and considered providing bicycle and pedestrian accommodations underneath the tunnel along Ferry Street. It's really not conducive for that. So we instead looked at how do we improve and enhance the pedestrian connection up and over the Ferry Street Tunnel along the Ferry Street Corridor. Part of what is uh, makes this corridor uninviting is the existing walls that are along the tunnel. While it matches the Troy aesthetic, um, it not be being not being able to see through those walls can be a barrier. <laughs> um, so the recommendation here is to replace the walls with uh, more ornamental fencing. Um, some lighting and really having some textures that draw people up from, from third to second. So you can see a plan view rendering here. Again, the textures, replacing that wall with fencing and being some lighting and incorporating some additional landscaping. And that matches the existing sidewalk. Continuing that, uh, we recommended, um, there's already the existing painted crosswalks within the SAGE campus uh, at first and second. So having those be raised to induce more traffic coming within the area and the campus and really elevate that as a key pedestrian crossing uh, across both those streets. And then also within the city of Troy, having those locations for those additional bicycle and pedestrian amenities, the bike racks, the fix it stations, the benches, and just more images of what those could look like. So with that, our last poll, uh, looking at the general recommendations with this, within the city of Troy, what would be the most important to you? We can pull that up. Give it a minute. Thank you. So select which project would be the most important to you, the third or fourth street protected bike lanes, the Ferry Congress Street improvements, the River Street conversion, Franklin and Church Street alleys or walkways, Ferry Street pedestrian improvements or the amenities. So we'll give a minute for everyone to respond. All right, we have majority responding. Go ahead and show variance Congress Street improvements scored the highest. All right, thank you so much. I appreciate your you all taking the time to respond to the polls. So with that, I, I apologize for how quickly we went through. There's a lot in this study and I hope you all take some time to 
um, review the materials when we post it uh, in the next few days, but we will do our best to answer uh, what questions you have with some of the additional time we have left. Um, so there were some questions about traffic circulation and how that would change with the two intersections and the bridge. So I will go back to that first and cover those questions. So I apologize to everyone that I am going to scroll back through the presentation. So, and I should say, while we did identify the shared use path across the bridge and the two intersections as three independent projects, the two intersections and shifting the traffic to the north side of the bridge needs to happen before the shared use path can be implemented on the bridge. That may be obvious, but I wanna make sure I state that. Um, so really the change at uh, the second Ave and 19th street intersection is the elimination of the second through lane in this direction. That's really the only significant change that would happen here. Um, it'd be again, a left turn only, and then a shared through right. Um, so there'd really be one receiving lane. There's already only one southbound left turn lane. Vehicles are already taking this right. And again, we've, we've looked at um, traffic volumes and level of service that the intersection can handle that lane, um, that additional through lane being taken away. And then on the Troy intersection with Ferry Street being two way and this traffic movement. So really, if you're coming at any one of these approaches, you'll be able to turn in any direction at this point. So if you're coming off the bridge, you could be taking the left onto River Street um, which you're not able to do currently. A lot of vehicles you know, are taking the right off the ramp and looping down underneath Front Street in order to access downtown. Um, so now there's much more freedom of movement. Again, a lot of trucks coming up from uh, South Industrial Road, uh, they are looping underneath Front Street and coming up the ramp onto River Street currently. Now with this intersection being changed, um, all that movement from South Troy would be able to come up to this approach and take a left onto the bridge. So I hope that clarifies. James, did you have any other thoughts on the traffic flow? Uh, I've been answering questions in the chat, so I, I <laughs> couldn't quite see your mouse. I know, I know one question earlier was asking about the bicycle movements through the intersection, specifically concerned about turning movements uh, interacting with the bike traffic. And I, again, I didn't catch everywhere you said, but you know, we will have priority crossings for bikes and pedestrians, um, right, Lindsay? So, so mm -hmm. when you're waiting at the light, you know, obviously we don't want cyclists or anybody going through um, the light, the red light. Um, so, so, you know, you, you'd be waiting there for the green um, and then you could use that to get back into the lane and cross safely. And, and because of what we've done with the, the turning radii in the intersection or on the corners and, and the truck apron there, um, that conflict uh, from the turning vehicles would be minimized. Uh, they'd be going through the intersection at a, at a slower speed. Yep. Yeah. It's, and it's, it and I didn't highlight that this is proposed to be a signalized intersection, so I should highlight that. <laughs> yeah, I just want to say over overarching, right? It's it's uh, there are there's so many inputs here. There's so many things happening, and we've spent a lot of time going through all the different uh, modes, all the different conflicts, um, trying to balance everyone's needs and figure out what will work the best way. Um, obviously, uh, everybody has their own their own way that they have to go and and we're we're accounting for all of those and we're, we're just obviously trying to make this um safe and and still perform and, and work at an acceptable level so uh, extremely um challenging in some regards but we feel confident in what we've come up with that you know we've got something that will work really well um obviously we're still still looking for input and, and figuring out you know are there things that we have missed but um it, it, there are a million things to take into consideration and on all of these things. 
Yeah, and this is a preliminary concept and there are a couple of questions about, about grades and the engineering. So, you know, we did look at design criteria. This is uh, within DOT jurisdiction. So um, they do have a say over making sure really both intersections and the bridge itself. So making sure that we're meeting their design criteria. Um, we tried to work with grades as much as possible. It's really fixed. We're not um, changing the tunnel, we're not changing the bridge structure, um, but the intersection does work within the existing grades. Um, so we did look at all of those factors as we came up with these, these initial concepts. Um, did, did you address the, the second question? It was by Michael Meyer. It says, would all north traffic exit at Sage? Yeah, so okay. would no, all north that. traffic. I think that might've been all eastbound traffic exit. Yeah. I, it's, it's a, I'm not quite sure, uh, Michael, what, what you were referring to there. Um, but Lindsay, you did go through all the, all the movements there and, you know, depending on how, how we phase it, it, well, once that's at its complete phase, right, completely built out, you will be able to do multiple different movements. So you wouldn't have to go directly under the tunnel if that was right. what that question was referring to. Right. Yes. You would be allowed to make all these movements. So you're not forced into one direction, either over the bridge or uh, through the tunnel. And yeah, you know, that's obviously what we're trying to get away from right now. One of the biggest issues is you, you can't really make those movements. You can't really make those decisions. If you're going down Congress and, and you, you don't continue onto Front Street, down to the river, you end up going over to Waterloo. And I think all, all Trojans have done that once or twice. Um, we've learned our lesson. We probably know how to get out of doing it. But we know that it's happening for visitors all the time who are trying to you know, go to uh, a, a local business or, or go to a meeting. And, and so, yeah, we, we were obviously um, trying to make this a connectivity uh, focused project. Mm -hmm. um, there was a question, uh, considerations to be given to the Congress Street quarter heading east and intersecting North South Street, second, third, fourth regarding walkability, specifically lighting and safety. Um, we did recommend some traffic calming treatments at specific intersections along Congress Street to further enhance the slow street um, recommendation for Congress Street and uh, provide um, better accommodations for cyclists and pedestrians as they cross those intersections. Um, you know, lighting and, and other details will be, um, you know, handled as the progress, the proje project progresses into more detailed design. I also just wanted to, to point out the main focus of, of this uh, project was west of the, the tunnel, right? So, so third and fourth, those intersections will be uh, analyzed more closely when we get to the Ferry and Congress Street improvements specifically. And there was another question asking about the funds for Congress and Ferry. Um, they will be, and I, I typed the answer, but it, it'll be integrated, but this is a a separate project that's extremely related, if that makes sense. <laughs> yes. Um, there are a couple of questions about the tunnel. I assume the um, tunnel underneath 787 that's proposed. Um, so I'll scroll forward to that. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. My apologies. So the tunnel under 787, we did include um, pump station to deal with drainage and water that may be sitting in the tunnel. You know, obviously we're close to the Hudson River, so we wanted to make sure we accommodated that. Um, lighting is recommended within the tunnel. Um, having the tunnel as wide as possible, you know, 10 to 12 feet wide is preferred. Um, and that's what we would like to, to see happen and what we recommend, but we did provide the other options. This would be pedestrian and cyclist only. Um, you know, smaller emergency vehicles may be able to pass through depending on the tunnel width, but this would be uh, solely primary, uh, 
would be bicycle and pedestrian access to the southern end of Hudson Shores Park. Um, the tunnel width, depending on exactly where it ends up being placed, uh, would be a little over 100 feet long, um, which is on the medium side as we see pedestrian tunnels go. But definitely you'd want to see lighting um, in the tunnel. Um, we did preliminary look, look at grades. Uh, 787 is elevated at that point. Um, so you would be digging down a little bit in order to have enough cover over the tunnel between the tunnel top and 787. Um, but uh, at least from a conceptual level, the grades appear to work. So I hope that answers those questions about the tunnels. We'll see if we click through those. James, there were a couple more questions about River Street conversion. Do you want to address a few of those? Yeah, okay. yeah, let me, I, I had a couple of them at my fingertips earlier. I just want to make sure that, this, you know, they're, we're getting to those. Um, I know, I know there are a bunch of concerns about parking, right? And, and we can talk about, we can spend two hours talking about just parking. <laughs> Um, but we won't do that right now. Um, on, on street parking, we're, we're trying to get on street parking to be utilized by, you know, the people who are making short stops throughout the day. Because if everybody was to park their car on street, it just we don't we simply don't have enough space for it. So we've got the state street garage, we have the Y lot right there, uh, and we know that there's a lot of demand uh, and not as much supply. We, we get it. So we are actively working to figure out solutions for parking, um, but it's, it's a challenge of being in a dense urban environment. Not everybody is going to be able to park right outside their, their doorstep. Uh, we're envisioning the small removal, the, the small number of parking spaces being removed in this study area or on River Street. Um, as a net positive to decrease the circulating traffic where people are confused by the one-way streets and create that better connection, that better connectivity for um, not only drivers, but creating this more walkable environment where people might feel like they need to drive less and maybe they'll come to Troy and instead of moving their car around three times, they'll park it once in the garage or in the lot and um, they'll walk down River Street. So. It might sound a little philosophical, but that's how we have seen it work in, in certain other areas. And um, we'll, we'll um, hope that those positive changes continue in places like this. Um, just on, uh, in case this question came in later, will there be a signal at River and Ferry? Yes, it is proposed to be signalized. Um, the answer parking. Where's the money gonna come from? Well, we're already looking for funding. Um, there we expect, there are some federal sources of funding um, for a lot of these types of projects. Actually, um, the two intersections and the Congress Street Bridge checks a lot of the boxes um, for these federal funding sources between it be for multimodal connectivity, the transit components, um, increasing safety. So there are a lot of funding opportunities and we hope that there will be more with a new highway transportation bill being passed this year. Joe or James, do you wanna add more to the cross our fingers and apply for lots of grants? <laughs> Go ahead, Joe. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think that's exactly it. We're gonna to have to be very progressive in what we look for. I know the tunnel is one of our priorities too, to get people in off of our bike path. So we'll look for extensions off of that funding that we receive. So it's gonna be um, just go for after everything that's there. Yeah, we won't bore you with all the different acronyms for all the different funding streams. <laughs> they are pretty ridiculous and they all sound the same. Um, but yeah, federal state level funding where we've already been talking to a couple of different partners. And of course we're walk, working with Waterloo um, to prioritize, uh, you know, different elements of this project. It's not all going to get funded all at once, right? So we're going to, we're going to have to phase it in and, and pick different elements um, to go after specific funding for. This is primarily a transportation project, but of course it's an economic development project as well. And uh, having two municipalities uh, cooperating with one another and working together is, is going to make us a little bit more competitive. Um, that's not always the norm. So we're, um, we're excited and, and confident 
that this plan won't be um, sitting on a shelf and collecting dust for, for 10 years. Uh, as long as uh, Joe and I are, uh, <laughs> you know, here, uh, we'll, be, we'll be fighting to find some funding. Thank you both. Um, so I think we've covered most of the questions. Um, if we missed your question or we didn't fully answer it again, I'm gonna go back to the very, very last side so that you guys, you all can catch the uh, project email address that does go almost directly to my inbox. So we will make sure that we get it and answer them. If you've got comments, suggestions, um, again, or questions, happy to answer those. Is there any last remaining questions before we close out? We're a few minutes over our time tonight. All right, I think with that, We are all set. Thank you. Great. Thank you, everyone, for your time this evening and joining us. Um, again, we'll post the presentation and recording from tonight. Uh, in the next couple of days, should be available through the City of Waterbleet and the City of Troy websites. And thank you again. <laughs>